What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, Mike, to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Thursday morning, so we are joined by Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors to talk about all the injuries that are relevant for Week 10 of the 2019 fantasy football season. Now, Doc's using his new uh, – he's doing a little flex on us right now with the new iPhone, so we're actually recording a call through his phone because the Internet wasn't working, but Apple has a way to solve all technical problems in the world, which is why I stick – I stick with Apple, man. I love their interface. I love how everything works together, and that's how we're going to make this work. What's going on, Doc? How are we feeling today? I love the uh, I love the the tie. And oh the, yeah, I had I had a, I had a lecture this morning for cardiology for sports, so I had to get a little bit gangsta. Yeah, well, you're looking gangster. I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous to be honest with you. <laughs> and then we're going to Morton's after this, so. Oh, I did. love the steakhouse. Yeah, I've been there a few times. That will not disappoint for sure. Uh, but let, let's hop in. Let's talk about some quarterbacks. Let's talk about some injuries. Starting off with. Um, Start off with Jacoby Brissett because, you know, this was this looked like it was going to be a devastating injury for the Colts. They had already dealt with the whole Andrew Luck thing. Then Jacoby Brissett gets hurt, and we're not sure of the severity. It looked bad at first, and you're thinking, oh, man, he could be out for the rest of the year. Turns out it's this MCL sprain. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, Jacoby Brissett's a pretty tough dude. I think he'll be able to tough it out. I think he'll throw a knee brace on. I've been saying this for the last couple of days, and we've heard good news from there. Uh, he's been back at practice. They did put a knee brace on. It seems like he's going to be ready to ready to roll. They said he was week to week, but it seems like it's more day to day than week to week. Uh, what are your thoughts on Brissett? Is he going to be suiting up? Yeah, I mean, I think they're right now. I put him about seventy percent chance to suit up. I think that will go up if he practices and complete on Friday. Um, I uh, when I saw the injury, he got kind of his ankle stepped on, and then he kind of leaned to the side. I think one of the linemen collapsed on his outside part of his knee and and it which then causes stress of the inside part of the knee which is the MCL of course um and that uh think of it as is a piece of rope that rope kind of partially tore um I'm a little surprised he didn't actually go back into the game uh and he must not have been able to get comfortable or he just mentally couldn't go back in because he wasn't sure if there's something significantly wrong um Sometimes what can happen is you can have a meniscus tear because because the MCL runs here and it attaches to the meniscus. So sometimes if you tear the MCL, uh, the, a piece of meniscus can go with it. So I, I was wondering about that. That's why they got the MRI and, 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 and it sounds like it was negative. So it's just an MCL sprain. He'll be fine. He, he won't be have as mobile as he normally is, but he'll be okay. Very good chance he plays this week. He won't have many receivers, but he'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're playing against Miami, so it's not, it's not, not really like they need him really. Or Yeah, they don't need a lot of receivers. They don't need a lot of quarterbacks. I mean, that was what a lot of people were saying. They, they thought that maybe they won't even suit him up because it's against Miami. But, I mean, it's the NFL, man. You need your best players out there on any given week. As you yeah, never know so what, what happened last week. Exactly, and and you want Brissett out there over Brian Hoyer. Look for guys like Zach Pascal. Look for guys like Jack Doyle on the wire uh, because T.Y. Hilton, of course, is out. So good news, it seems like, for Jacoby Brissett. Patrick Mahomes seems like we might be getting more good news. He's been close each – I don't necessarily know how close he's really been each week, but he's been practicing in a limited fashion, and it seems like we'll probably get the superstar – back this week you would agree with that here's what we've been seeing from the chiefs they've been following protocols pretty well i, I know what they say at the beginning but that doesn't it ends up translating what actually happens right so they say oh maybe you can play next week obviously we didn't see that happen the earliest return to play for this injury is three weeks that's what we'd be entering this week so there's a probably a 50 to 70 percent chance he will play this week i think if he gets in if he's practicing with the ones and if he gets a decent practice in on Friday, I think there's a very good chance he will play. They don't necessarily need him, and I could argue that they should hold him out until after the bye. They can't. It's hard to risk losing any games because you're going to lose ground quickly. Yes. Excuse me. And then the other part here is, and I really like how they did this. Uh, last week, they came out with a statement saying, we ran it by our team doctors, and team doctors presented with percentages of potential to re-dislocate the knee cap uh at under four under three weeks it's 40 percent after three weeks it's about 15 percent that's a big difference right. so that's where we're at now we're about we're about to start entering the 15 to 20 percent range and it really will never truly go down until he gets it repaired uh, with a combination of appropriate taping and bracing and and the strengthening rehab i think he's got a good chance to be okay i'm i'm happy there was smart with him because he's a stud 
Okay, good to hear. So that, that percentage chance you say is around 15 to 20% now, and you say it won't get better really until probably he gets it fixed in the off season, I'm assuming. Will the percent- yeah, I mean, because the problem is that percentage is only there because that tendon is still torn or partially torn. If it's healed, then it's not going to happen again. I mean, it can still happen, but it, it's not going to happen as easily. So based on what they're telling us, and I'm assuming his kneecap anatomy is normal because I don't, that'll be complicated if I get into it. But yeah. um, basically, 10 to 15% for the rest of the year is not a bad percentage um, considering. It's okay. there, but it's not awful. Yeah, that, I, those reports are ridiculous. We're like, yeah, uh, you know, it was best case scenario because Mahomes' knees, he like wobbles and walks that way so that it worked out good for him. I was just like, okay, like, this, is getting, <laughs> this is getting absurd. Uh, Matt Ryan, though. Should be back, right? It's after yes. bye, he had the ankle sprain. Um, he missed a week, and then they had the bye. Yeah. So it seems like he should be ready to roll. He's got a high ankle. He should be close to 100%. Uh, with quarterbacks, they're usually pretty good with this. He's not much of a mobile guy. Yeah. In a minute, we'll talk about somebody else who's dealing with also with a high ankle that may not be 100% yet. Mm-hmm. But as far as a quarterback with uh, taking it, it's been what, basically three weeks. He's pretty close to 100%. I mean, it really takes another week or two to be really comfortable, but I think they need him. Like, I think they really need him. I mean, Schaub looked really good, but he, he's not Matty Ice. No, yeah, they need they need Matt Ryan back. I don't really actually know what they need him back for, considering this is a lost season. But, yeah, you know, in order for us to continue to be a confident offense, we do need Matt Ryan back on the field. So you can fire him up if you are an owner of him this week. Obviously, good news for Julio and the rest of the passing game. As you mentioned, though, another player dealing with high ankle sprain, moving over to the running back position, staying within the NFC South, we got our boy Alvin Kamara. Now, he missed week eight. They had the bye in week nine. Big matchup week 10. He is back at practice on Wednesday. Um, I don't even believe he was limited himself. Jared Cook, Traquan Smith, all back at practice. Mm-hmm. Now, with Alvin Kamara, obviously, he is in the backfield. He is not under center. He's not a quarterback. So the ankle matters a little bit more in terms of mm-hmm. what he offers as an athlete, what he offers you know, on the field and his, his abilities. So with Kamara, you're still of the mindset that he might be a little bit limited? Yeah, so someone tweeted me a video of him in like a parade or something. I don't know what the hell it was. It might have been a commercial. He was still gimping. He was still – you could see he wasn't normal. Like he was fa- – favoring it so if you remember with uh tevin coleman and some of these other guys they take a good four weeks i mean even saquon came back at three weeks or closer to four weeks and he wasn't really 100 percent. i don't know if he still is but so i would say kamara is probably at the the 70 ish percentile right now i mean for his for his injury there's a chance he comes back that doesn't mean he's 100 percent. that just means he's healthy enough to play and, 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 and at lower risk people were asking if they should drop Murray. And I'm like, what are you crazy? No way. Like this guy was a top 10 back when, when Camaro was out. I mean, I know, I mean, right now it's handcuff season. Like this is prime handcuffs time. So uh, I would not be surprised if Murray still got a lot of looks this week and they eased off of Camaro to make sure he feels okay and make sure he doesn't re-injure it because they need him. They, they, they are, they're a top team. They need to, they need to be smart with him. Yep. Absolutely. Do not drop Latavius Murray. Every handcuff, in every fantasy league should be owned at this point. I don't care if it's Alexander Madison. I don't care if it's Tony Pollard. I don't care if it's Latavius Murray. Yeah. All of them need to be owned because they become the single most valuable waiver wire pickup all year if their starter ends up getting hurt because they'll literally win you a championship. Like you said, like Latavius Murray, I don't even know if he was top 10. He was probably closer to top five. If oh, he was a monster. He was beast. I mean, he's he was beast. just complete. Yeah. Right. So the fact that Kamara is probably not at 100% means he's at a, a little bit more of a, a risk to re-injure whatever it is going on, or they just mm-hmm. pull back his workload. So Latavius Murray could really, really be uh, someone that, you know, propels you to a championship. David Johnson said he is 100%, though. So coming off uh, his missed week, he's ready to go, he said. He will be close to 100%. Per his injuries, we don't really have a, a perfect timetable or even like a perfect dichotomy of what exactly exactly is going on with his body right now I think he's coming back to a timeshare most likely it's going to be 50 50 between him and Kenyon Drake considering how well Kenyon Drake played oh. last week on Thursday Night Football oh yeah so, look great so now you have multiple concerns David Johnson's workload because you saw mm-hmm. them start to go a little bit more towards Chase Edmonds right before mm-hmm. David Johnson even got hurt so that was already a concern they replaced Edmonds with Drake workload's a concern now this whole injury thing he says he's 100 percent 
Do you believe that? So the, the tricky part with David Johnson is he's never really looked like his 2016, I think it was 16 self. Yeah. Like we want to believe that his goal was what a thousand rushing a thousand receiving. I don't know where he's at, but I don't think, I don't think he's anywhere near there. No, no way. Um, we know that his back was banged up. We know that his ankle was banged up. We don't really know what he left with and what he stayed out with. He didn't what he played what two or three snaps that one game and screwed over everybody. He can say he's a hundred percent. No one's a hundred percent right now. He's a hundred percent for what he's feeling good. Basically. I, do I think he returns this week? Yes. But remember they're playing the bucks. So the bucks have a monster rush to defense like legit they shut down cmc and they're the only team to do it like yes you may be 100 percent, but this is a very tough matchup for you as a running back so he may get some dump off passes but i think that he's going to split workload with drake unless they decide to do some crazy um, air raid stuff where they put them both in the field which probably wouldn't be the worst idea i'm not overly worried about his injuries right now but i think he's at high risk for re-injury i think they're going to end up using both running backs as uh more receiving type backs than yeah. actual runners because like you said Tampa bay's run defense is really 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 good david johnson on the ground is is looked like he's been running with a bum ankle and a bum back all year even when he was healthy to start the year he's been yeah he's edmonds been literally- good so it's like He's been no – he's had no explosion. He literally hasn't looked good as a running back in like three years now. So David Johnson is not David Johnson 2016. Does he still have receiving skills? Absolutely. He's still one of oh, the yeah. receiving running backs in the game. And I think Cliff is starting to see that that's how he needs to utilize his back. So, yeah, yeah with Kenyon Drake, you know, pulling away as, as the better runner right now, uh, DJ would be better used in the passing game. So if you're in like a standard league, I don't really even know if I would throw David Johnson into my lineup as anything more than uh, like a desperate flex. So if you've drafted David Johnson, obviously it was early draft capital, but I'm not excited about getting him into my lineup, yeah. even though he's- He reminds me of James White right now. Pretty much. He's like a bigger version. Like it's like you see him and you want him to be so much more than that because you know he's been capable of doing but, it. That's all you know. Doing. You're right, yeah. You, you think he can be- Zeke or, or or Saquon, but he's not performing like either of those two. No, he's you not. Know? So, so I, he reminds me of James White. Like he's a he's a very good receiving back, but I don't. James White isn't going to get a ton of carries because he's not extremely good in, in 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 the in the rushing role as the primary back. Yeah, um, the, yeah. David Johnson's been a. It's an odd storyline this year, and we'll have to see what happens when he comes back. Uh, now, I'd imagine it's it's kind of a split backfield. Uh, if if we're talking about. Le'Veon Bell, there's been a lack of split backfield. It's been all Bell this year. However, mm-hmm. he randomly has stopped practicing this week. He got an MRI on his knee on Monday. Uh, they're saying it's nothing long-term. He's very sore. I, I, I don't know, like, you know, ankle soreness, knee soreness. I don't know if, like, knee soreness is really a thing or is it, like, w- when you have – Stuff going on in the knee, it's more tendon and ligament related. No, do you get soreness or is it just like tears? Yeah, it's a combination of things. I mean, remember these guys, he's not a spring chicken anymore. He's yeah. got a lot of mileage on that, on, on those knees. His body doesn't bounce back like it used to five, you know, eight, 10 years ago. The issue, I know he took a year off and people are like, oh, he's going to be better. What? He's because he's older or because he's younger? Because what? Like he didn't get any younger. Problem is, He's not going to be able to bounce back in the three, four, five days that these that the timeline requires. And you can't just keep hitting these guys with steroid uh, in steroid injections. That's not a good look. They just it doesn't it doesn't pan out. So it's like he wants his knee to respond, but like Gurley's last year, it just doesn't do what you want. Just because you want it to do, it doesn't mean it's going to do that. He wants to figure out what's going on in there, and and that's why they get an MRI. But a lot of the times, you're not going to see a big change. You're going to have, he's going to have some inflammation. He's going to have a lot of swelling. He's going to have just general tendon, uh, just kind of uh, basically like a stretching. Think of it that way. So think of a balloon, which is essentially what the knee is. And then think of stretching that balloon. Like it's not going to respond like you want it to. Okay. Uh, so that's part of the issue. The, the question is who's his backup and, and, and what do they do? Do they continue to ride him to the ground? Do they, uh, it, 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 there were some rumblings that Ty Montgomery is banged up with a knee as well. He has to be uh, he's getting – I think he's gotten zero touches over the last two weeks. He's not getting any play. And it's weird because preseason, the beginning of the season, Ty Montgomery was – you know, he was exactly what Le'Veon oh, Bell was like. Great. Right. So you would think Ty, Ty Mont's the next guy up, but it's been Bilal Powell who's getting backup touches. And at this point, it's like if Le'Veon Bell's out and we don't know who is going to be the guy in that backfield, I'm probably not even taking a chance on it because his team has one win. They're not scoring points. They're not doing oh, God, much going down the field. So it's just like – you know, maybe if you're in a full PPR league, you take a dart on one of these guys and hope that they end up, you know, in that bell roll, catching seven or eight passes in a game. 
but at the same time, it's like, I, I'm not, I'm not doing that unless it's, it's very risky. So, I mean, there's definitely a concern with Le'Veon Bell. They said it's not a long-term concern, but the fact that he's really sore on a Wednesday, like how much healthier can he get in, in two or three days? They were saying he's like day to day and he's looking close to hundred percent. I feel a lot better about it, but they, it, the way they're talking about it makes it feel like they're, um, they're very far off. On this it. was my main concern with drafting him. That's why I wasn't super duper high on him. Cause I'm like, this guy's not health. He's not young. He's never been able to really stay super healthy. He took a year off. So his body is not acclimated. Their offensive line is not very, not awesome. They're slow play calling. I mean, even if he got a monster workload, which he's been able to do, it's hard to sustain that for a full 15, 16 games or whatever your fantasy season is. So has he been good? Yeah, considering, but he hasn't been a top three, four back, which is probably what you were hoping. Yeah, yeah, you talk about him not being able to stay healthy. He's played 16 games once in his career so far back in Pittsburgh. And now the guy who took over for him, James Conner, also hasn't been able to stay healthy for a while. He missed last week's game. Jalen Samuels yep. filled in and caught 13 passes. So knowing what we know about G- uh, James Conner's injury, I feel like they might sit him out again because they, they might have found something to Trey Edmonds as the early down guy and then Jalen Samuels as the pass catcher. Jalen Samuels, good to go. Throw him into yeah, the yeah. I mean, what did he get, like 15 re- targets or something? Some crazy number. 13, yeah, 13 receptions, which is – I was like, my God. Yeah, in the one league I was playing against him, I, I somehow survived that, which is <laughs> – I started him in every – Everything that I had, it, I had him on every line of DFS line. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was had, like, you can't yeah. fade him at that price. No way. No, uh, no way. I think I think he I went saw like five or six x. The ownership was like sixty, like sixty five oh, for seventy. Should have been higher. Yeah, it probably should have been, been. But the person who won the million maker was not, uh, did not have Jalen Samuels in his lineup. He actually faded. Really? Him. Yeah, which wow. is interesting. But regardless, um, James Conner comes back. Obviously, that's going to kind of kill any value that Jalen Samuels has had because Conner's been like low key really Solid. good this year. He's he was he started off a little bit slow first couple yep. of games, which was surprising with Big Ben. And then you're like, oh no, Big Ben's gone. This offense is going to plummet. And we saw it for some of the skill players like Juju's had almost no value this year, but James Conner on the other hand has been absolutely rocking over the last month and a half. Yep. So knowing what we know about Conner's uh, injury, what are your thoughts on him this week? Do you think we see him back on the field? And if so, do we see him in the James Conner role that we've been accustomed to seeing, you know, while he's healthy at least? At this time, I'm calling James Conner 40% for Sunday. Okay. I, I'm not really excited about him. I, I'm concerned because – He's dealing with an AC or shoulder sprain. So that involves tearing of the ligaments. If this was only a grade one, a very mild one, he probably would have played last week. That's likely what Miles Sanders had. If this is a grade two or three, you don't just go up a little bit. You go up a lot of it. He's hurt. I mean, he can't reach out in front of him. He can't reach across his body. He's going to have time holding onto the ball and taking a hit. This is not an injury that heals in 10 days and then you're back. So uh, the issue is try to be a running back and not get hit in the shoulder. Like it's impossible. You can't do it. The issue I have with this is that even if he's back on the field, he is one new hit away from a a re-exacerbation and just a severe pain again. In that regard, I think they hold him out another week. If this is a grade two, I think they hold him out this week. If this is a grade three, uh, there's a lot of gray area actually here. Some of these guys end up getting surgery and some of these guys just try to push it out. But these, we're talking like four or five weeks at that point total. Okay. So this could very well be another couple of weeks. I don't think he's going to be 100% until like week 13. Okay. Uh, so we have, we have a couple of weeks before he's potentially truly 100%. These hurt. Like I've taken care of a bunch of these. These are not comfortable injuries, especially for a running back. So I think this is another Jado Samuels Edmonds week. We should find out closer to Friday, and, and then he, he wouldn't be surprised if he's a game-time decision. Yeah, I mean, they say out of Pittsburgh camp that they're optimistic that he'll end up playing. I would also side with you on the lesser half of the 50-50 that he probably doesn't suit up because, I mean, everything out of camp, They've been optimistic about the other injuries that he's had earlier on in the year, and they've always been like, you know, he's fine, he's going to suit up, he'll be able to play. They were always optimistic, but like this this time around, it seems like Connor has been a little bit more negative on on how his injury is kind of healing, and the team's been a little more pessimistic about um, the shoulder sprain, you know, and they're taking it a little bit more seriously. You could tell he's in a lot more pain than the other injuries, so it seems like at best a 50-50 chance that he plays. So I would make sure that you have uh, an alternative in your running back or flex spot or whatever because. Even if he does play, they'll probably 
I don't know if they're going to limit him, mm. but like they're yeah. going to the Rams. The Rams are a very, very tough rush defense uh, this year and overall a good defense. So it's going to be a tough matchup regardless. And he's not someone that you should be super, super duper high on. Uh, you could drop comments down below if you are concerned about any other running backs and we'll try our best to get around to those comments. We'll move over to the wide receivers, just the pass catchers in general. Adam Thielen gets back in for their like three snaps re-injures his hamstring and now this seems like it's going to be a longer absence right now bad news for Thielen owners because he was someone that was kind of lighting it up for you and now he's dealing with this hamstring injury that he's already been ruled out for for week 10 you know they're not even saying oh it's a game time decision which tells you he's, he's probably gonna miss this week probably probably next week maybe like a week 12 return well, how are you feeling about this re-injury of the hamstring? So initially I was really concerned about this and then there was some rumblings that he said that he just couldn't get right like he just didn't feel right and he didn't want to make it really bad so he took himself out essentially which is smart I, I, I wish more guys thought like that if that's indeed the case and he didn't have a setback and obviously there's no way to know that without literally evaluating him last week and then again this week I think that there's probably a 50 50 chance he comes back next week Okay. But if if he at any point in time, if he had a setback, he is probably going to miss another three to four weeks if this is true, or two at least two to three weeks after this week. Right. So and I I want to say they're a late buy, so he may wait until after the buy. Yeah. Let me. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm pretty sure he is like a like a, he's like one of the he's like the last bye week, which I think is what twelve or thirteen. There are some other wide receivers that have already been ruled out. So we have T. Y. Hilton, we have Brandon Cooks yep. that will be out for yep. this week. Uh, Sean Jackson's out for the year. Preston Williams out for the year. Yep. Well, Fuller's most likely going to be out for this week. I believe yep. they've already been ruled out. So let's talk about Perfect. one more wide receiver. And I'm pretty sure I just got an update that said Dwayne Haskins has earned another start. Correct. Which, they're on a bye this week. Exactly. He's earned a start maybe in practice, in the practice scrimmage or something like that. But if, he, if you consider that earning a fucking another start in the NFL, there's a reason the Redskins stay stay the Redskins. Oh, God. AJ Green. I mean, uh, the AJ Green yeah. saga is never going to die, I don't think. So he was supposed to come back this week. They said he was ready to roll, make his debut, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's not, an, he's not a practice. He didn't feel right or something, and now he's day-to-day -day and – I have no idea what's going on. It seems like there has to be something going on behind the scenes, um, or it seems like – I don't even know what's going on. But, like, injury-wise, is there anything you could tell us? Like, is there a reason that E.J. Green should not be ready right now? Remember, he had off-season foot surgery on the other foot for a, a turf toe, like Devontae had. Then he had this new injury to the other foot, which is an avulsion fracture, which takes about six weeks – maybe closer to eight to fully heal after surgery. So that would have put him at about probably week four, five, maybe six. Mm -hmm. So now he's trying to ramp up. He's not just getting back to like walking. Like he's talking about full sprinting, hard cutting. And, and, and as much as you want to just say, oh, just turn it back on the switch. It doesn't really work that way. Right. The, the issue with, uh, we don't know the exact location of the bone, but the issue with this is a lot of the, the small bones in the foot that control the toes they are connected directly to tendons. When the tendon fires, it pulls on that bone. Well, if that is injured or not 100% still healing after surgery, and you try to ask it to pull, guess what's going to hurt? So he, it sounds like he went through a walkthrough today and he was hurting, or Wednesday today. That's not exactly what I want to hear from someone I'm expecting to run 20, 30 routes this following week, three, three days later. So, like, now you're talking about contract. Now you're talking about a rookie. Well, not rookie, but not not Andy Dalton. I don't think he plays this year. I, I don't think he plays this week. I I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think he plays in 2019. And I feel like we Stop been... depending on him. If he comes back, he's like a freaking late season waiver ad. That's the way I look at him. Yeah, there, it's just it's ridiculous at this point. Um, now, Evan Ingram popped up. He's dealing with the sore foot. He did not practice Wednesday. He has been diagnosed with a mid-foot sprain. Is considered week to week. Now, he's in a walking boot, which could always be precautionary. Mid-foot is, as they would say, Liz Frank territory. Is that what you are concerned about him dealing with right now? Guess who had a Liz Frank injury in the preseason? Cam Newton. Where's Cam Newton now? He's on my fucking IR spot in my dynasty league. Yeah. Welcome to, well, welcome to Liz Frank injuries. You think that's what it is, though? 
midfoot. That's the midfoot. There's no other midfoot. That's where it is. Is that it? Like, that's like, it. If you have that's, a I mean, injury, that means you have a, just a Liz Frank injury. You have a Liz Frank sprain. That's and and that's the problem. Uh, I only own him in one. I own him in my in a in a tight end premium league. So I was so where you need him the most. I, mean, I, I know he's like my fourth round pick, and he started off dying. Has down been by so go. bad this year, bro. It's every I year. think I think Disley is still a top ten tight end. Dude, he is. He is like, I and he hasn't played points. in like a month. I know it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Give you an idea of how bad this it's is. It's every year. We, it's like the same shit. It's absurd. Every I actually year. think this year is probably better than last year because last year it was literally three guys you can even think about putting in your lineup and feel confident. At least this year, there's like six, six, five yeah, or six. You, yeah, like you, you have, have a guy that catches year. one pass for one touchdown and fells. <laughs> yeah, and he, he you're excited. You. Luxury, you're royalty at that point. So Evan Ingram, um, we're, we're considered. This is like a, a this is a big hit for him. Like he, there's a. This could be. Him. I'm yeah. not. So so when I hear midfoot's brain and then i hear dr robert anderson or bob anderson yeah i don't like those two phrases put together no, because much, right? that's what cam did last week he went to visit anderson this week he's on ir right so this is the ir doctor you see him he puts well, you well he's the guru for foot or supposedly the guru for foot so he's very good at his opinion he's very good at what he does so if he tells you shut it down that's what you do like you don't go Zachary get a third opinion because then you're just disrespecting and, 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 and it's probably not going to change anything. That's what happened to D-Jax. He got three opinions. The world renowned specialist in he got sports three hernias. And all he needed was your opinion, doc. It's ridiculous. The world I've, I've heard the guy speak before the guy who did his surgery, mm-hmm. the world renowned specialist that did d surgery is 20 minutes from the facility. Like th- th- oh, this has been the same situation all along. These guys, we know what we're doing. We see these injuries a lot. I don't care if you're a professional or if you're a regular dude doing construction. Most of the time, these injuries heal very similarly. Yes, you have great rehab and whatnot, but you're all, they're also not asking uh, them to do the crazy running routes and getting hit like you are. So it's like, I don't feel good about this injury. I'm very concerned. You don't have a choice but to sit him until he hopefully gets better. Ellison will probably get some more looks, but you running out of options here at tight end. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it gets Ben Watson there. looks good. I think, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, when Ben Watson looks good this year, you're in for a fucking, you're in, you're in trouble. But actually, yeah, Rhett Allison low-key has been okay as a streamer when Ingram's out. Sterling Shepard's still doing the concussion. So at this point, it's like Golden Tate or bust. There's nothing else going on in that passing game, really. So, yeah. Saquon uh, hasn't looked very good either. No, it, it's just – he's getting killed in the backfield. Like, Dallas was in that backfield three yards in the oh, backfield yeah. every single run that they had. So all that hype about Daniel Jones, like, opening up the offense more. I mean, he's obviously made the passing game a little bit better, but it has not translated into well, seeing open space. Remember, he, Saquon was relevant when Eli was in the, was there. Oh, yeah. Saquon's not even relevant right now. Because Eli would check down at least to Saquon. I mean, yeah, he, like when they got Saquon Daniel in space, Jones the one play they the got Saquon in space, he ran for 60 fucking yards. And there's other times where if Daniel Jones just checked down and got the ball out quickly to Saquon, he's wide open. They just like – Oh, doesn't. yeah. Saquon's a monster in the open field. Like the only one that scares me more than Saquon is Derrick Henry. Yes. You don't want to t- tackle Derrick Henry when he's in the open field. If you're a defender, no, absolutely not. Oh, God, no. I don't of, know why they. In terms of like three. physical, physical fear, yeah, it would be Derrick Henry. But in terms of like getting embarrassed, I mean, you're by the oh, time you're gonna get. You yeah, could be one yard away from Saquon. By the time he makes one move, though, he's laterally five yards. The yeah, other yeah. So he's he's back. got the Barry Sanders like like yes. like agility. But 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 I mean, uh, yeah. So it, it the good news there there is some good news not with this story but with other another tight end is that it looks like George Kittle should be fine which I mean, he, a lot of people he hyperextended the knee I think but he played the remainder of the game it looked yeah. like, I mean he toughed it out he was a warrior in that game but he should so, be good he took a shot to the low, right just below the knee the, the, the proximal tibia he has a serious bone bruise in there i'm talking significant bone bruise that may not heal for 6 months like Jeez. that's going to take a long time to heal, but he was going on adrenaline and it hadn't really kicked in yet, which is why he was able to play the game. The nature of his knee injury was so lucky is that he didn't have any ACL torque. It was straight. If he had any torque or any funny ankles, he would have tore his ACL, but he got really lucky because it was taut and he didn't flex any which way, which is why he did. Okay. It's probably swollen. He may not be a hundred percent, but he's better. 
So I'm not overly worried about Kittle, and you really don't have much of a choice anyway. Yeah, I mean, he's practicing, right? Or he didn't practice Tuesday, but they were playing on – They have Monday, so they're, 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 they're playing Monday night, so – I, yeah, extra. I, mean, I would still, I would still make sure you have a backup just in case because yeah. if you play Monday night, and if it's looking like he's going to be a game time decision, you might have to throw someone else in there. So for those of y'all that have George Kittle, uh, this injury is definitely something to keep on your mind uh, throughout the rest of the week in terms of waiver wire and who you might be looking to throw in there uh, behind George Kittle. Now, there's not too many other significant injuries to talk about. O.J. Howard should be back. He was a full goal of practice. Cameron Brate was also a full goal of practice. I just read reports on that. Jared Delaney Walker, Walker not looking good. Yeah, I think Delaney, they might even shut Delaney Walker down. At this I point. wouldn't be surprised oh, if they uh, IR him. This is the second year in a row. Yeah, second year in a row. They've already missed a couple games. Just see what Jonas Smith has for the rest of the year. Jared Cook should be back. Um, he not the worst practice. play. No, I mean, against Atlanta, I, I think you could definitely do uh, – Yeah. I think definitely do worse and, um, and breeze is back and he looked fantastic his last game i'm not worried about his thumb at all yeah so um i mean in terms of if you miss you know if you have ingram or if you have kittle and he ends up missing time like i i mean none of them are that great but you could definitely there are some guys that you could stream oj howard jared Kirk, herndon uh, maybe uh, ma- herndon maybe, maybe he can find relevance uh, he, uh, he like didn't do anything AJ last Green. week He's getting into like aj green territory where i don't i don't believe I, i'm not going to believe it until i see that he's on the yeah field. Yeah, and Najoku may be worth a pickup. I think he's back in a week or two. I think week 11 might be the first one he's at. I don't know if I want anything to do with that passing offense, but – That's that's the problem with Njoku. It's so funny because there's so many guys that you look at and you're like, oh, like you, you would think if they're going to fail, it's for one reason, and then we're 10 weeks into the season, and you're like, holy shit, it's because of this. And that was, it was nothing that we could have seen coming. Oh, and then they just talked about that Hunt's going to get a lot more touches. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Bro, that's like that comment alone is a fireball offense. I feel like. Oh, like, I'm like, yeah. it, it, will you just free Todd Munkin? Like, just just let him call freaking plays. Bro, if they got Freddie Kitchens out right now and had Todd Munkin coming in and calling plays, I don't. They really make know the playoffs. About, I don't know about all that. <laughs> for the rest of the season, <laughs> for the rest of the season, they feel like they're pretty far behind there. Uh, I don't know. Dwayne Haskins, you kidding me? You're killing my Terry McLaurin stock now. I know, it's scary Terry or Terry F1 just plummeted. I know. Dude. All right, buddy. The schedule was that's, perfect. Uh, yeah, that's, all, I think we that's all we got for the week. Yeah, I got to hop on another call. Uh, but thank you all for joining us. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Go check out Dr. Morse on Twitter. Go check out the Fantasy Doctors YouTube channel and all of their other social media stuff, which will be linked in the description as well as in the comment section. Uh, let us know what you think, if there's any other players that you are concerned about this week that we did not cover. Uh, So for all y'all out there, thank you. We love you and peace.